Now we're moving on to working with fractions, but we're going to apply some rules about having powers and third signs, okay, which you've seen before, but now adding them onto fractions and then working with that could be a little bit complex. Okay, so I want to make you aware of something. Let's say I have 2 over 3 as a really simple fraction. Okay, and let's say that I square the whole fraction. This square applies to both the numerator and the denominator. Okay, that is the same as saying 2 squared over 3 squared. Perhaps pause the video and double check that on the calculator. Okay, remember we can use the calculator to check everything we're doing in the section on fractions. We just have to show all the steps as well. Okay, what about a power of 3? Um, so like if this was, let's make it 3 over 2, and it was to the power of 3. Okay, well you guessed it, that's going to be 3 to the 3 over 2 to the 3. These guys can be simplified, that would be 4 over 9, and this one would be 27 over 8. Okay, now what about square roots? What if we said the square root, because if there's no number there, it's a square, right, of 4 over 9? Okay, well that's exactly the same as saying the square root of 4 over the square root of 9. Square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3. Okay, what about cube roots? What if we said we want the cube root of 27 over 8? Okay, well that would be the same as saying the cube root of 27 over the cube root of 8, which is 3 over 2. Okay, now we're going to apply that where we have powers and thirds in the following examples. First up, we have an example that has my arch enemy, a mixed number. Okay, don't like it, can't work with it. There is no way in which the rules that I just explained account for mixed numbers. Okay, so we don't want mixed number. We need to get that into improper fraction. 1 times 2 is 2, plus 1 is the 3, and of course my denominator stays the same, and the whole thing was negative to begin with, so I'm going to put my negative on the top. Okay, that is a strategy. It doesn't make any difference if you put it on the bottom to your final answer, but I'd like you to have that as a convention, as a way we all agree to do it the same way, because then you'll understand these examples better, and it will also help you in the long term dealing with all kinds of fractions. Okay, right, so what does that mean? That means I can have negative 3 to the power of 3, Please notice that I'm including the negative in my bracket because I'm aware that the negative gets cubed as well. Okay, and then it's going to be 2 cubed on the bottom. Okay, negative 3 cubed is negative 27, and you could do that baby step on the calculator because we'd never know. And then 2 to the 3 is 8, but the whole idea is to show all of these steps, okay, to prove that you are doing the kinds of calculations that we are testing not on the calculator. Okay, bed mass says I need to do what's inside the brackets first. I can't simply square and square, and this is a huge issue guys. A lot of people will just square that one, square that one, and like hope it's fine. It's not. It's absolutely not. You have to deal with the brackets first, do your subtraction, and only then can you square it. And so I need to find an LCD for what is inside the bracket. Okay, I've got two, I've got three, I think that's one of the easy ones. It's going to be over six. Then this one I need to times by three over three. So it's going to be one times three at the top, so three. Copy and paste the minus. And this one I need to times by two over two. One times two is two. Okay, we've got it. That answer, whatever it is when we get there, needs to then be squared. Okay, 3 minus 2 is 1, and the 6 is just the 6, and now I'm going to square that, which means I need to take 1 squared over 6 squared. 1 squared is 1, you probably know that 6 squared is 36, and that's my answer. Let's look at when we have third signs. Okay, again, mixed number, please treat the third sign like a bracket and please immediately change the mixed numbers into improper fractions. 
4 times 6 is 24 plus 1 is 25. Thank goodness, because if I'm going to square root, I really want there to be a perfect square. Keep the denominator the same. It was positive, it stays positive, and let's put back my square root sign. That is the same as saying the square root of 25 over the square root of 4, which you probably know. Show that step and show this step, please, and then you could actually go and do this step on the calculator. 5 over 2. For question D, we're dealing with a cube root, and it's negative. I'm hoping you remember from grade 8 that when you're dealing with the cube root of a negative number, it's totally fine. You can cube root a negative, and your answer will be negative. Okay. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the numerator and the denominator. I'm going to say cube root of, and I'm going to give the negative to the 64 at the top, over the cube root of... 125. Please don't put the negative on the top and the bottom because if you have that they actually cancel each other out because then you've gone and added an extra negative. So don't do that. Okay, cube root of negative 64. You could get away with doing that on the calculator. It'll be negative 4. And the cube root of 125 is going to be positive 5. Okay, so what happens if I done it the other way around? What if I would put the negative at the bottom? Well then this answer would be positive 4 this one will be negative 5, which is actually the same thing. Okay, so I just want to make you aware that negative 4 over 5 and 4 over negative 5 are the same thing, but we use the negative at the top because then it's much easier to work with numerators when we're adding and subtracting things. Here we have a third sign that we need to treat like a bracket, excepting there's a bracket in there already. Okay, so what now? Well, we need to deal with what's inside here first. Okay, so a third is like an exponent in that in terms of bed mass it comes very early on in the process but I need to treat what's inside here in its own capacity first. Okay, so don't know what's going on here. 1 minus, I'm not going to minus the 4 over 5 from 1, I'm first going to square it because of bed mass. Okay, and I treat the whole third sign like a bracket, so definitely got to do that inside first. Right, what is 4 over 5 squared? Well, it's the same as 4 squared, which is 16, over 5 squared, which is 25. Okay, so I've dealt with that, so I can drop my bracket. All right, let's carry on working with what's inside the third sign as though it's a bracket. Now what I need to do is I need to find an LCD. Okay, I think that's a no-brainer. It has to be 25 because 1 is just over 1. So what is 1 when it's over 25? Well, it's 25, hey? So it's 25 minus 16, and that's all over 25. Okay, let's carry on with that third sign and go and find out what this ends up being. 25 minus 16 is 9, and 25 stays there. Okay, now I can split this up and you can see I've got some perfect squares. So that's actually root 9 over root 25, which is actually 3 over 5.